this tutorial, we're going to go over some of the basics of the fluid system inside of Blender and create a simple fluid simulation. So let's jump right in. So we have the basic default Blender scene open up here, and we don't want to delete this cube for this lesson. We're actually going to use it. So we want to scale this cube up. So press S on your keyboard, and we can just begin to scale this out to right about there. Should work. We want to make it pretty large. And we want to go to our wireframe mode so that we can see through the cube. So press Z on your keyboard to activate the wireframe mode. And now we want to press Shift A to go to this Add menu right up here. This will pop it open for us. And we want to go to Mesh UV Sphere. And we're just going to translate the sphere up slightly. All right, that looks good. So what we're doing here is we're going to have this sphere act as the point of where the fluid is going to come from. So the fluid is going to come from this sphere, and this box is going to act as the boundary. So the fluid is not going to be able to go outside of this box. It's going to live inside of the cube here. So no fluid simulation will be able to exit this box here. So this is going to act as our boundary. So we want to select this cube, and we're going to extend this panel out here just by going over this double arrow. If you mouse over this area, you should see it. And we're just going to scale this out so that we can see more of the modifiers on our header panel here. So we're going to go to the very end to Physics. And we're going to select that. We're going to go to Fluid, change this type to Domain. And that means this cube is going to act as our domain so, that, so no fluid can exit the cube. So now we want to select the Sphere and go to Fluid. And this time we're going to change the type to Inflow. So that means we're going to have fluid come from this sphere object. So right now, by default, all of these x, y, and z values are set to zero, which basically means when we simulate this, the fluid is just going to drop kind of straight down there. And we want to add some direction to it. So I'm going to go over here to our y value. I'm going to change this to negative y. And I'm going to change the z value to 1, just to kind of give it some force behind it. All right, now I want to select my domain again. So go down here and select that. And I'm just going to go over some of the properties here to kind of get you familiar with what they do and how you can use them in your own fluid simulations. So right here we have the resolution. And we have final and preview. So the final resolution is what the fluid simulation is going to look like at render time. The preview is what we're actually seeing inside the viewport here. So you can see we can go down here to Viewport Display, and we can actually change this to display the final resolution inside of our viewport. You can see that the subdivision kind of gets bumped up there because we're working at a higher resolution level. I'm just going to change that back to Preview. And we can just up this value anytime we want. But just keep in mind that the higher this value is, the longer the render time is going to be. So it'll increase the fidelity of your, actually, of your simulation but it'll actually increase the render time at the same time. So you're going to try to figure out how to balance that when you're working with your own fluid simulations. So right under the resolution, we have the start and end time. So right now it's set to 0 and 4. So basically 0 means that it's going to start at frame 0. And the end time is set to 4, which basically means the simulation is going to play over in 4 seconds. But I want you to keep something in mind. It's really dependent on the frame you have in your timeline. So right now we have the simulation set to 4 seconds. But our timeline is set to 250 frames. So what it's actually going to do is take this 4 seconds and try to stretch it out to fit within 250 frames, which is going to give us kind of like a slow motion result. So what we want to do is change this to a value of around 100. Because right now, if we kept it at 250 frames, we'd probably want to change this end time to around 10 seconds. But we're going to keep it at 4 seconds for this. So below this, we have some other parameters down here, some other panels. If we open up this fluid world, you can see a couple different things here. And right here, we have the viscosity. And we also have some presets to work with. Right now, it's set to water. We have oil or honey. So the viscosity basically acts as the thickness of the fluid. So if you want to have something feel more like tar instead of water, this is what you would want to adjust. Right now we're going to just keep it set to water for this tutorial. 
and I'm just going to close that panel out, and we're going to open up this fluid boundary. So right here on the left side, we have the slip type, and right now it's set to partial slip. So if we can see, we can open this up. We have a couple different slip types. So this basically acts and determines the stickiness of the obstacle the fluid is interacting with. So no slip causes the fluid to stick to the object. And free slip allows movement freely on the obstacle without any stickiness at all. Right now it's set to partial slip, which is kind of the default value, a mix between both. So we're going to keep that at partial slip. And right over here we have surface. So the smoothing value lets you set the amount of smoothing to be applied to the actual fluid surface. And the subdivision allows you to create a high res surface mesh during simulation time. The higher this value is, the better the simulation will look, but also means higher render times. So that's something you'll just want to keep in mind when you're working with your own fluid simulations. And finally, under that, we have fluid particles. And these are really cool. This will actually simulate basic particle simulations as your fluid is happening. So you'll get kind of small splashes and that kind of thing. It really just adds more realism to your fluid simulation. All right, so now you have a kind of a basic overview of some of these properties and what you want to adjust if you want to get different results. So now we want to bake our simulation to see how it's going to look. So go up here, and we're just going to select Bake. And this will begin to bake our simulation. Now, if we look up here, we can see basically how long this is going to take. We have this progress bar right here. And I'm just going to pause the video and come back once the simulation is completed. All right, so the simulation is just completed. So now let's take a look and see the results we've gotten. So I'm just going to play this out. <laughs> All right, great. You can see that our water is kind of splashing up from the sphere there. And it's hitting our boundary object, which is the cube. So we have this hitting the wall, and it's filling up the cube there. And I'm actually going to take off wireframe kind of just to see the results better. <laughs> All right, awesome. Now this was just a very quick and basic overview of the fluids in Blender. In later lessons, we'll dive deeper into the fluid system and tackle more complex projects. Now be sure to visit the Digital Tutors blog for more free tutorials.